the meaning of a jewel of work. So when I talk about the units of work, clearly we have to talk about force and we know that a force is a Newton and we have to talk about a distance and that has a unit of a meter. So when I multiply both of these here, this is known as a Newton meter. And this guy is defined as a joule, which we typically write in calculations as J. So our goal here is to really understand what a unit of a joule is. So what I'll do here is that I'm gonna imagine, what do I mean by a tiny joule? So a joule of work is a tiny, tiny quantity. And what do I mean by that? Well, imagine that you're going to lift a stick of butter. So it turns out that, so what I'm saying here is that one stick of butter is about one Newton. And then what we're gonna do here is that we're going to lift it one meter. So when I do that, you could imagine that if I have some surface here, and then what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna lift my stick of butter, right? Here's my stick of butter right here. And then as I lift it up this distance here, you know, all the way up to here, you know, you gotta ask yourself, how much work did you actually do, right? Lifting a stick of butter one meter is almost nothing here. But yet, when you go and you calculate the work, you get one times one, which gives you one joule. So a joule of work is minuscule. And what we find here is that a joule of work is not the common units in the United States here. So the common unit of work is a calorie, not a joule. And so what you find here is that there's really, people talk about two types of calories. They're the same calorie, but they have two different names. There's the little calories, and they typically write it as one little cal like this, and that turns out to be 4.186 joules. And so when I say the little, it's because it's in a lowercase c here, and then if you take a thousand of these little calories, which is of course one kilocalorie, this is what they call the big calorie, right? So in this case, this is the big calorie. And this guy is 4.186 kilojoules, which is equivalent to a food calorie. So when somebody talks about a food calorie, they're really talking about 4,186 joules. So when I look at this thing, there's really two calories. And these are the two calories that we typically talk about here. But in this course, in general, we really don't use calories. In physics 4C, where you talk about thermodynamics, you know, you typically hear about calories a little bit, but in, in, in science course, we typically like to deal with joules. But for right now, I'm gonna deal with calories. So my goal here 
what is a jewel of work? And so what I want to do here is that I want to do an example with you. And the example is that you drink a can of soda. Now, not all sodas have the same calories, but you're going to see that they're roughly about 150 calories. So you drink a can of soda of 150 food calories. And so what you want to do now is that, so now what you want to do here, now you want to test the meaning of burning off a can of soda, right? Burning off a can of soda, right? Sometimes we might say, oh, I ate too much, okay? I ate too much. I need to go burn it off. Well, what does it mean to burn off, uh, you know? 150 calories. Well, let's think of it in the language of jewels because that's really what we want to do here. So what we want to do here is that when we say burning off, that is the equivalent statement of working. So that means here, if I want to do the work to burn off, let's say a Pepsi can, that's about 150 calories. And if I convert that, let's say that we approximate one calorie as 4,200. You could see here that this turns out to be 630,000 joules. So that means if you're going to burn off a can of Pepsi, it's going to cost you 63,000, 630,000 joules. But I would be lying to you if I said that that's what you have to burn off. It turns out that you have to subtract 25%. And the reason why is that your body takes 25% of those calories in order to operate. So that means then what you really have to burn off is, is uh, 473,000 joules, right? So when you look at this number, 473,000 joules, is that a lot? Oh, hell yeah, it's a lot. Check it out. We could do even better. I looked up a Snickers bar. A Snickers comes in at 280 calories. And so if you go through the process here, you find out that this is 1,176,000 you know, joules. And if you then go in, you can subtract this thing. Then the number that you're going to have here is going to be 882 thousand joules. That's a lot of joules, right? I mean, I've heard people say like, oh yeah, I'm going to drink this Pepsi and I'm going to eat this uh, Snickers bar. And I'm going to just say, you know, we should do both of them. Hell yeah. I've seen that in classrooms saying like, I need energy, right? What do you mean you need energy? Is that what you mean? Or do you need work you need the ability to do work, okay? So you need energy to keep going. So you drink a can of Pepsi and eat a Snickers bar. So there we go. So that means here 
if we look at this here, so if you want to burn this off, right? To burn this off, you must do work. So here we go. So that means that the total work of your body must be what? Well, there's 473 kilojoules for the can of soda plus the 882 kilojoules. Okay, I don't think I have all the numbers, so I'm going to be estimating these. So if I add these, that's 5, 5, plus 1, 9, plus that. That should be, okay, check my numbers. That's the total work in kilojoules of, the, of your body. So this is what you want to burn off, right? This is the work that you want to do right here. So how are you going to burn this off? There's lots of ways to burn this off. And I figured you might go something like this here. Maybe what you want to do here is that you want to go in and let's do a barbell, right? You have a barbell at home. So we'll say here is that to burn this off, you use a 10 pound barbell. Now, I actually converted this thing beforehand. By the way, I was also gonna do a bench press, but I think the barbell may be a little bit nicer here. It turns out that 10 pounds is 45 Newtons. So it's about four to one, okay? So you're gonna use a, a barbell and then, so then here's the question. How many times do you have to lift this to burn off the can and Snickers bar. So here we go. So you could imagine that there's an arm, okay? Let's say that this is the arm. Now, if you're a physics geek like me, we don't have muscles. And then you're gonna put the bar right here. Here's the barbell. And all we know is that this guy's 10 pounds, right? And then let's say that these are your fingers right here as they wrap around the bar. And so what you're gonna do now is that you're gonna do what? You're gonna lift this guy up. And for the sake of argument, I, I wanted to pick a, a nice number. My number was not five, uh, was not half a meter, but let's say that that in this scenario here, we're gonna say that the distance that you lift this thing up from here to here is half a meter. So you're lifting it up. So you could imagine here that there's gonna be two phases here. One phase is that you lift it up, right? So you're gonna do the work to lift up. So in this case here, what we know here is that you gotta apply a force and that force has to be at least the weight of the barbell. And let's say that we move almost with zero acceleration. So the fact in this case here, what you're seeing here is that I have what? I have the force going up. I have the displacement going up. So I must be doing positive work here. So in this case, it's gotta be 45 Newtons times 
half a meter. And of course, this is going to give me positive 22.5 meters. I mean, joules, excuse me. And that's what the work is lifting it up. On the other hand, what happens when I lower it? If I lower it, note that the force still has to be up. You still have to push upwards. Otherwise, this thing's going to just be in free fall or something. But what's happening here is that the displacement is in the opposite direction now. So the big difference here is that now this is negative work. So when you're going down, you're getting 22.5 joules. So it is true that if I look at the work done on the bar, then the work up plus the work down should be zero. Of course it's zero. Why? Because there was no displacement as far as the bar is concerned. Okay, and that's a, a real tricky phrase here. The work done on the bar is zero because if, if I start from, let's say, zero position, I lift it up half a meter, and then I lift it back down to the zero position, there is no change in distance. However, what we say here is that your body does work. And how does your body do work? The way it does work here is that there's your heart applies a force to what? To the blood. And as it applies a force to your blood, what does it do? It moves your blood some distance. So when we talk about your body working, it's working because it's applying a force and it's causing a distance change. So when I look at the work of your body, well, you lifting up and you lifting down, your body sees that is exactly the same here. So it should be twice the work of it going up because it still has to pump blood in order to do that. So you could see here that then this becomes 45 joules. So that means that your body does 45 joules to lift it one time. So this is key here. Your body does 45 joules to lift the bar once. Well, you could see the problem now. And the reason why here is that we saw that the work of the Pepsi can, it contained 150 calories minus that. We saw that this guy was what? 473 hundred-thousand joules. We saw that the work of the Snickers bar Contained what? After the your brain takes its stuff? 882. So here we go. So if you want to talk about the number of reps, right? That is, how many times do you got to lift up to burn off the, the, the uh, Pepsi? It's got to be well, this is the total number of, I guess, 
you would probably you probably say calories. No, that's just how much work your body has to do to burn off that can of soda. And this is how much work you did here. So this is only a mere 10,500 reps. And if you go and you look at the number of reps to, to do the Snickers here, the Snickers is then 882,000 divided by 45 joules, just a mere 19,000 times 600 reps here. So if you add the total, well, that's approximately 30,000 reps. What I like about this discussion here is that people don't realize what it means to have a can of soda that's 150 calories. People don't understand what it means when you say 280 calories for a Snickers bar. It puts it into perspective what a jewel is by telling you what the end, what the working or burning off is of something that you put into your body.